Hi, I'm Bruce Aisha, and in this video we're going to be looking at insert effects in Cubase. Now Cubase has lots of different types of effects you can apply and they work in different ways. Uh, insert effects are processors, audio processors that sit in the signal chain. So they usually sit on a channel, it might be an audio channel or an instrument channel or even an output channel, group channels and other kinds of uh, routes that the audio can go down and they allow you to affect the sound in specific ways. Now it might be something as simple as an EQ or a filter for just tonal shaping. It might be compression for dynamic processing. It could even be other more elaborate types of effects that do glitching and all kinds of other interesting things. And there are a wide range of third party effects available as well. Cubase has actually got a very healthy selection of plugins available for you to use insert effects. And we're just gonna have a quick look at some of those now, look at the various groupings of them and maybe load up a few to actually see them in action. So here we have the project window and I've got a couple of audio loops, which are actually part of the content provided with Cubase, just playing in the background. A couple of audio tracks, hosting a couple of loops. And you can see you've got the audio coming through on this channel on the side. I can load up the lower zone mixer. And just a reminder, you can click on the icon. I've also got a shortcut key for that. And you can see what's going on here. We have this drum loop. We have the kalimba sound, and then we have the audio output. Now this mixer, the lower zone mixer, is uh, a kind of cut down version of the main mix console. Um, but you can look at different areas of it um, to focus on specific tasks. And this one, we've got the actual main faders, and we can see the meters with the actual audio level on. If we click on this little icon here, we get um, some slots where we can insert our own effects. Uh, and we can also click on here, which allows you to create a send effects. So what I'm going to do here at the moment is actually look at this idea of inserting effects in the signal chain. And I'm going to focus on doing it in the stereo output. So if I click on this button here, it then brings up a window where you can actually see a bunch of groupings for different types of audio effect. And if I click on one of these buttons here in this category, you'll see we have a bunch of delay effects. Now these are categories for different types of processing and these are all insert effects. Uh, delay, we create echoes and things like that and there's different forms of that, some very simple, some more elaborate. We have distortion effects, including guitar amp simulation. We have dynamic effects, including limiting and compression, de-essing, removing those S's on vocals, uh, envelope shaping and other kinds of uh, effects there. We go into EQ and there's a range of EQ and filter effects. The filtering effects, more specifics, uh, are, are hosted in this filter folder. Mastering type effects, that's basically limited to dithering, which is a more advanced form of mastering processing. Uh, that you might have on the mastering processing stage. Modulation effects like chorus and flanging, rotary like Leslie cabinet simulators, and in fact there are a number of different chorus boxes in there. Um, and generally they do interesting things with small changes, wobbling pitch and things like that. Uh, pitch shifting, uh, reverbs, which tend to be more often used in a send effect configuration. Uh, surround type effects and some interesting tools for things like test tone generation and tuning and other such uh, processes. So I think for this it'll be useful just to load something up and see what it's actually going to do to the audio. And the thing to bear in mind about insert effects is they effectively, when you apply an, an insert effect, it routes all the audio through that particular processor. And perhaps the most effective way of demonstrating that is if actually you look at a filter effect. So we choose filter and I'm going to choose um, a, uh, this morph filter effect. Click on that there and you see it loads up in this slot and immediately it appears and it looks like actually it's overloading the, uh, the output channel. So let's have a look at what that's doing. So here we have the filter and let's have a listen. And I can move this slider around And what it's doing, it's morphing between two different filter types. This one here is a low pass filter. We 
with resonance. So a little bump around the point that where the actual cutoff point happens. It emphasizes that filter sound. So they're rolling off. I'm taking away all the high end energy. So this is a low pass filter. It passes the low energy, the low frequency energy. If I move the slider up here, I can then find that it actually does the opposite. And this one is set up for a high pass filter. It, it passes through the high frequencies, so I can take out the low end. Or I can morph between the two, a mixture between the two. And that's why this is called the morph filter. But it's most simple, you can just use it for doing some interesting filtering or filtering down or filtering up in a low pass configuration. So that essentially demonstrates what's going on with an insert effect. It's taking all the audio, it's routing it through this little processor, and then the result, the processed result, is sent to the output. Um, and, and that's why it's an insert effect. It's inserted into the signal chain. It doesn't route it somewhere else in parallel, it, it literally routes it straight through it. And that's the most simple way in which you can use an insert effect. We could use something like a delay effect. And if we choose something like, let's choose something very, very simple, this mono delay. Let's open that up, click the edit button and play some sound through it. Let's turn the sync button off, which would synchronize the echo or delay with the project. Let's move that up a bit here. We have filters on the sound coming back from the delay. We'll leave those off for the moment. And we can push this feedback up so it repeats over and over. It gets rerouted back to the input so you get these long repeats. Now, that probably doesn't sound so effective across the whole mix. So you can apply insert effects on individual channels and this can be more effective. So for example, we don't want the drums to be um, uh, delayed or echo, have that echo effect. Maybe we just want it on this kalimba loop. We could open up and choose an effect on this one channel alone. Oh, that's on the drums. Let's choose the kalimba loop here. So choose it on this one, open it up on there, choose delay and we could actually add it from here. We equally, we can just copy the one we've already been using. We can drag it over and move it into that other slot. So we're taking the way it's been set up on the main output and we're just using it on this kalimba sound. You can also copy as well. So I could hold down the Alt key and drag it over and you will make a copy onto that, onto that drum track. Notice though that when I play, it's not actually enabled until I press the little power on button. There's a little bypass button which turns it on and the color changes. So I'm gonna leave it off the drums. I'm gonna add it back to the kalimba loop. And let's just listen to kalimba in isolation. Maybe what I want to do is make it work so the delays, those little echoes, are in time with the track. And this one is repeating every bar we can choose. It to be quarter note, eight notes. And these filters, in the case of the delay effect, allow you to change the tonal shape of the delays the delayed element only. So we can take a little bit of the low end off, and a bit of the high end off, so they don't get in the way of the dry sound. An interesting thing here, I suppose, to point out is, whereas before we looked at insert effect and it's all the audio is being processed by the, uh, by the insert, with the, with the, in the case of delays and some other effects, you can actually mix between the dry and the wet. So you can say, I only want the signal dry, in which case you get the original sound, or you can have it only wet, so you only get the delayed sound. And more often than not with delays, you'll probably be somewhere between the two. If I go back to the dry sound, I can click on the bypass button, put it back on, and then let's unsolo everything.
and you can hear how it becomes more effective using it on a channel on its own. So of course we could do, you could use filtering, we could use EQ, we could all use all kinds of other insert effects um, on a channel. You can actually use multiple inserts in, across multiple slots. You can rearrange them as well, so you can move uh, the effects around, much as you would do in a conventional studio with a patch bay. In effect, what you're doing is you're, you're repatching things as if you were using the cables, you're patching the inputs, the outputs in different configurations. Um, Another thing to point out, I suppose, is that you can also, as well as having it on the channels, you can also have it on the outputs at the same time. So you can have multiple stages. So you might have effects on uh, one particular channel, you might have multiple effects on that particular channel, and you might have effects on the output. So there's lots of different places where you can insert this processing, and that's why, they, why you get the name the ins insert. They're inserted into the signal path. They allow you to uh, process something specifically for that particular bit of audio. If I open up the main mix console window, um, you can have a look here and it looks exactly the same. You get the insert uh, in, appearing in the mix console. And of course, at the moment, I'm only seeing the inserts because I've only chosen to see the insert. I can see other elements of the mixer if I want to. We can also, if we go into back into the project window and I bring up the, uh, the channel settings, you will see that if I go into inserts here, you can see the way in which the inserts have been set up. You can see multiple slots. I can also click on the little routing button and it will show me how, how the audio is passed through that insert. You can see literally how it is. You have the inputs and the outputs and the processing happens at that, that point there. Um, so it becomes quite clear in terms of how the audio is processed. So in this video, we looked at uh, inserts in a basic sense within Cubase. We saw the different types of insert effects are included with the program. We loaded up some inserts. Uh, we explored a little bit with a bit of filtering, a bit of delay, and we saw how that you can apply multiple insert effects across channels, whether they be audio channels, instrument channels, or output channels. And in fact, there are lots of different other channel types where you can apply those insert effects.